going back to like seven to nine years old, I have always been interested in secrets because I know the world is made up of secrets. And it's our duty as adults to try and discover all the secrets to our life and find out how to maneuver our lives in the world of secrets. And so our government is secret. Our financial arrangements on the earth are in secret. Our religions are in secret. Our military establishment is secret. I don't think there's anything open to the human being today that has not been tampered with and kept secret. So this is what I've tried to do is awaken people to all the secrets of life, the things that they have never been told before. And believe me, that's a hell of a story. All kinds of dark secrets that are symbolic and manipulating of language and terms, and that's why words are so important. We humans are word control humans. We are controlled by our intellectual understanding of words, and and we are, we are being misled by our governments, our religions, our political leaders. We're being totally misled into a totally destructive uh, outcome for our human civilization. We're being led down the garden path to a tyranny which is unbelievable. Most people do not have the ability to understand how really deep and dark the secrets of our life really are and how bad we are being misled into believing things. It's really extraordinary. Understand New York, Chicago, and underground crime, underworld crime syndicates. There are only a handful of old guys at the top and they call the shots. And the biggest one in, on the earth today is, of course, the Holy Father in Rome. He's called the Holy Father because he represents God. He is the original Godfather. Oh, if you my God. I'm telling you, George, I'm telling you, man, I was telling people this, like, if you look at, like, a, a, most of your North American, South American, and European crime organizations, they're all Catholic, man. They have Catholic of course. backgrounds. Of course they are. The Jesuits are playing both. They run the CIA and they run all the, uh, <laughs> all the crime families. They, they're collecting checks on both sides. That's why... Uh, that's why in Rome you will see the most important, wealthiest, industrialist politicians and secret society, heads of secret societies going into Rome and bowing down before the Pope and kissing his ring because they realize they better get on your damn knees and bow down to him because <laughs> he is the godfather. He calls the shots around the earth, and everybody who's in power knows that. And so we've had presidents of the United States assassinated right in front of us by the people who are working for the Godfather, and, uh, and we have the organized criminal syndicates today in New York. It's a very big story where our enemies actually operate from and how they do what they do. Uh, we go back to Rome. When Rome was ruling the world over 2,000 years ago, when Caesar decided he had conquered all of the known world, he, he then turned his attention to Britannia. It was the one area where Caesar had not taken over. And so he went into Britannia, crossed the waters, and went into Britain. And he set up the Roman Empire in Britain with his troops. And where was it that he set up his empire in Britain? It was in a city called York, England. This is where we get the York Rite in Freemasonry, from York, England. And that's where Caesar ruled 
the Britannia, the whole British uh, operation around the world, the maritime operation around the uh, operation around the world was being ruled from New, from York, England. <clears throat> and then with the founding of America, Caesar ruled and came here to America and he set up his operation for the Vatican and it was in New York in New England, New York. And so today America is nothing more than a Roman, Catholic, fascist, totalitarian, criminal organization. All over the world, America runs the earth for England. And and with England, we, we run the world. And, and behind it is the Vatican. Behind it is the Holy Father. Everybody thinks it's Israel. I think there's, I think there's levels above that. And Israel is just used as, you know, kind of this... Um, Oh, hey, look over here. They're doing all this stuff. Now, I'm not saying that Israel isn't doing some stuff that could upset some people or that is Israel doesn't have the right to exist. I'm not, that's not my point, but it's not what I think Israel is taking heat for stuff going on in England. I think that's what Brexit is all about. I that's think, where Israel came from. Yes. From is, Israel as a product of England. It was the British who set up the state of Israel. The Rothschilds, and so, right? And so in America, we have, if you go back to history books, you will find and you'll read that Caesar ruled Rome from a hill in, in, uh, in Italy. It was called Capitoline Hill. That's in the history books. Or Capitol Hill. So we still have Caesar Augustus, the in, in the international emperor of the world, ruling from New York, the Empire State. What empire? The Empire State is the Roman Empire. And how did Caesar rule the Roman Empire from York, England? He did it from ruling New York with the United Nations. He has finally, finally been able to collect all the nations in the world into one organization, and the organization called New York, the Empire State. And how does Caesar run New York and the Empire State from New York? How? It's called... The Washington, D.C. is the corporate headquarters for the corporation called the World Revolutionary Movement under, under Caesar. And this is why and Caesar would go up on the hill. It said in the history books he would go up on the hill each morning to officiate over the Roman Empire. Where did he go? He went up on the hill to the Senate of Rome. And so today we still hear the same crap about, well, up on the hill, the Senate did this and that, and the Senate said this, and oh Caesar went up on the hill, God. and up on the hill, the Senate did this and that. It's all Roman Catholicism. The whole world is do dominated by the Holy Father, who speaks for God. He's the Godfather. And therefore, Rome is the bottom line on all of the filthy, degenerate stuff going on in the world today. The raping of children, the selling of women, the buying and selling of drugs, the promotions of wars, the mafia, La Cosa Nostra, Italian. It's an incredible operation that's been going on for so many thousands of years that we just don't see it. We don't know anything about it. We humans are, are so busy trying to pay our rent and eat and stay alive, we don't even know what's going on and how it's being run. Yeah. Unless, of course, you drop out of society, which I did back in 1959, some 60 years ago, and started looking at the secrets behind the world government we live under. And you will be surprised when you find out how this world is really working, how it actually works. 
you do not you do not live in the United States of America. You think that you are an American living in the United States of America. You are not. Neither one. You're not an American and you're not living in the United States of America by law. Once you understand that, now you understand why. When you go into court, you do not have any rights. You cannot talk to a judge about your rights as an American. You don't have any rights. You're not an American. Because after the Civil War in this country back in the 1870s, 1860s and 70s, after the Civil War was over, it was, it was understood that we in this country are not united anymore. We used to be a united states. We're not united. One half of the country was killing the other half. We had a terrible, bloody civil war. And that's what I see coming now. I see another civil unrest coming. And it's going to be horrible. It's going to make the first one look like child's play. This one, you're going to be fighting for your life because that's what your enemies who are working to overthrow your government are working for is to take your life. And you're going to have to do something about it. Okay. And believe me, it's going to be horrible. I, want to I it. think I see it coming in October. Words are power and how they've just they, they, they've just made political correctness has made everybody stupid because it's it tells you that's what the schools are supposed to do. Right. I'm with you. government wants to have schools. But if the schools were teaching people something the federal government did not want the people to know, it wouldn't be happening because the federal government calls the shots, period. And so if, they, if, the, if the schools were teaching people what the government did not want taught, they wouldn't be doing it. And so most people do not realize the impl implication of words. We have something called Democrats and Republicans in America, not realizing for a moment what each one of those words mean, a Democrat as opposed to a Republican. Today, we know that the Democrats are a Soviet communist system in operation within the uh, so-called United States. We are not living in the United States of America. We're living in the United States Incorporate. Yes. It's a corporation, a company. And this is why when I see you coming out of a restaurant with some woman one night, I call you the next day and I say, you know what? That girl you were with last night, she's bad company. And you better watch out for her. She's bad company. And you say to me, mind your own business. What are we talking about here? Company? Business? It sounds like, uh, it sounds like some sort of a corporation. Oh, and my God. And so, therefore, I find that you're going to get married, and she's going to be your partner, partner, company, mm -hmm. business. We're talking about financial. We're talking about business. And, therefore, it's called a business. That's why when if you're going to get married, you got to have a business license because you're not free. You're not an American. You don't walk into a bar with a with a gun on your hip like the cowboys did. You don't have any freedom. You're not an American. Americans have freedom. You are a U.S. citizen. U.S. citizen. If you look it up in a law but law dictionary, a U.S. citizen is an a corporate employee of a foreign corporation on the maritime law. There you we go, Jordan. That's it. That's why you're in a relationship. Partnership. That's it. You're in, you're in this citizenship. Ship. Maritime law, and dude. It's a, maritime law is a partnership, a scholarship, a dealership, a relationship, all kinds of words relating to ship. <laughs> why? Because all ships are female. This is why a captain of a ship, a rocket ship, a sailing ship, any kind of a ship, a captain of a ship would always use the term she when talking about the ship. 
She is very seaworthy. She's been very good to us. She's done this. She's done that. Why are all ships by law called she? Because she delivers the product. It's the male in the marriage that man manufactures. He is going to manufacture. And she is going to be in labor constructing the item he has manufactured. Unbelievable how detailed this brainwashing is. Oh, yeah. It's very detailed. It's highly intelligent. I will tell you some things you may not want to hear. Why not? Communism, communism, Nazism, Christianity, and Jews. All four are part of something called Antonism. A-N-T-O-N-I-S-M. Antonism. Antonism is a word going back to the ancient Egyptian god Anton, A-N-T-O-N, look it up in a dictionary, Go is the god of the sun in ancient Egypt. Today we refer to him as the Tetragrammaton. The Jews call the Egyptian god the Tetragrammaton, the word for the, the name of God in Judaism. In Judaism, the Jews worship God, and they say his name is Tetragrammaton. Look it up, Tetragrammaton. Tetra means four. Gram, G-R-A-M-M, means a letter, like A, B, C, and D is a gram. It gives us our word, grammar. So the word for God in Hebrew is Tetragrammaton. Tetra is four. Gram is letters. And that's why in all synagogues, I do mean all, all synagogues in every country of the world, when you walk into a synagogue, you will see on the podium, on the altar, you will see a sunburst. You'll see the sun, and the sunburst will have inside of the sunburst, you will see four Hebrew letters, Tetragram Aton. The Aton was the sun god of Egypt. Today we call him Ra, sun god, the sun god Ra. We put in a Y on the end and call it sun ray. The sun ray is the tetragram Aton. The Jews are giving us the worship of an ancient Egyptian god called the tetragram Aton. And, this is, and what was the symbol in Judaism for the tetragram Aton? Go back and do some homework and find out the symbol that the Jews used for hundreds of years. Since for 2,000 years, the Jews have used the symbol for the tetragram Aton as the rising sun and the swastika. There are swastikas all over Israel in the, in the, the Jewish houses of worship. In the synagogue, you will oh find swastikas. God. Oh my God! So this go is on the web and type in go on uh, go on image, so you only see the pictures, and type in Jewish swastika, and you will see in the in the different uh, synagogues in Israel big red swastikas on the walls and on the floors of the of the. Yeah, Jewish swastikas. And you will see the Star of David and the swastika in the middle and connected with it. It's all over the web, everywhere. Why? Because there is a definite connection between Judaism and Nazis that you don't know anything about. Well, I'm trying, Jordan. I'm trying. I'm trying to learn. I Man, know. I'm just. just I'm just my making mind. my point that I'm there joking, is dude, there I'm is joking. a definite Jewish Nazi connection that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody is interested to hear. We don't want to know that Jews were heavily involved in bringing about the Nazi Party. Hitler Nazism was Jewish. Is a Jewish operation. Hitler was Jewish. His father was Jewish. His his great, and his so much of his uh, of his history, 
shows the Jewish connection with all the symbols in Nazism were Jewish symbols. And it's an incredible story about the swastika was a Jewish symbol to start with. And it came out of India, came out of uh, Egypt, ancient Egypt. And today, communism, world communism, and Nazism, and Christianity, <clears throat> and Judaism are all operating under the same operation. It's the same game that's being played among all four mm -hmm. basic movements of the world, communists, Nazis, Christians and Jews. This is something that most people do not want to even begin to imagine possible. But I have seen it after 60 years of doing the research on the subject. I'm telling you there is a definite Jewish connection to Nazism and fascism and Christianity and Islam and all of this can be traced back in history if you want to take 60 years to do it. It can be traced back into India. India is the home of Nazism, Communism, Christianity, and Judaism. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all claim to have as their beginning forefathers uh, Abraham. Abraham never existed. There was no Abraham. What? There was no Abraham. He never existed in history. No matter where you look in history, there was no Abraham. Abraham comes from Abram. In the Bible, he was called Abram until God changed his name and called him Abraham. There was no Abraham. It goes back to a priesthood in India an ancient priesthood called the Brahmins. Brahmins was a Brahmin priesthood that even today, the Brahmins are referred to as God's chosen people. They are the only people in India that can be talked about as knowing God. If you're going to talk about God, you better be a Brahmin because Brahma is God in India. And so, therefore, the priesthood of Brahman is the priesthood of God. They are God's chosen people. You put an A in front of Brahman, it becomes Abram, Abraman. And from oh Abraman, or Abram, God. becomes Abraham. And Abraham had a wife, we're told, as the Brahmins will tell you. If you look into Brahmanism, you will see that there's a goddess in the worship of, of Brahmins today, which is a very important goddess in Brahmins in India today. Her name is Sarah Swazi. So Abraham and Sarah is Abraham, Abraman and Sarah Swazi. Sarah Swazi is, a, is the female goddess in India. They have a river by her name, Sarah Swazi River. So the Abraham and Sarah is nothing more than a ripoff of the Abraman and Sarah Swazi. So there was no Abraham. There was no Moses. There was no King Solomon or King David. If you go back to the Bible and look up the word King David and write down the scriptures that talk about King David, then go to the earliest Bible many hundreds of years ago the very earliest Bibles, you will see that in those same scriptures in that earliest Bible, you go back to the scripture, talk about King David, it says it's King Druid, D-R-U-I-D, not D-A-V-I-D, not King David, King Druid. The Jews are a Druidic people. And so are the Europeans, are a Druidic people. And so the Druids were around, the Druidic people were around before the Roman Empire came about and during the Roman Empire and even after the movement to the Western world, the Druids came over and lived in our, what we call America. America is a Druidic country. And, the Dru and among the Jews and among the Druids of Europe, and both North, East, West, and Southern Europe, North, East, West, and South, 
which gives us our word news, N-E-W-S, Northeast, oh, wow. Western, South. The Druidic people were the lawyers, the priests, the, the, the political heads. They were the heads of the government, the heads of the church. Anybody who was important in the ancient European civilization were Druids. And one of the most powerful symbols in the Druidic system of life in Europe was a magic wand, like Merlin the Magician with his magic wand, and Mickey Mouse with the magic wand, like the uh, the, Potter, uh, the orchestra leader. Orchestra leaders lead the lead the music with their magic wand. In fact, magic wands were always made out of a holly tree. It's made out of Hollywood. When right. you find There's out so how the Hollywood there. establishment works directly with the Catholic Church and the Holy Father and the mafiosis and the gangsters and the Jewish mob, the underworld operation in California of the La Cosa Nostra and the Jewish mafia, you will find for the first time America is a very, very dark criminal empire for the Vatican. That's why you see our presidents first. like the Bush has run over and kissed the ring of the Holy Father. You better kiss the ring. You better go on your knees, fool. Where does like things like the Illuminati, does that matter anything? Uh, the um, Freemasons, the Jesuits, where do the Jesuits play in any of this? I would like to explain to you that the Illuminati are the Jesuits. Ah. That's where we get the word Illuminati from. The Jesuits is a military order inside the Catholic Church. So is La Cosa Nostra. It's not a holy order. They carry guns and they will kill you if you get in their way. So that's the same thing going on inside the Vatican, but it's called Jesuits. And the Jesuits are what I call, and what we call, Illuminati. They are the bottom line behind Nazism, Communism, Americanism. They are the bottom line behind the Roman Empire's move on the earth. And it all boils down to a corporation. After the Civil War in the 1860s, the Jesuits were involved with the killing of Abraham Lincoln. We now know that. We've got all kinds of documents and letters and, and secret material that has been uncovered for many years that the Jesuits were very instrumental in killing Abraham Lincoln. He said that. He said that himself before he died. He said my problem and my war is not with the American people, it's with the Jesuits. And the, one of the terms in the military, today in the military, if you're in the military, you'll know the term, a mission. The word mission is a military term, like mission impossible. And so therefore the Jesuits opened up on the West Coast their Catholic missions. It's a mission, and it was all based on the Catholic Church's Roman establishment in America to set up a mission. Just like in, just like in Israel today, you have the Wailing Wall. We have the Wall Street, too. But you have the Wailing Wall, and the Jews in Wall Street are still crying and praying at the, at the wall. It's a Wailing Wall. But what the Jewish people do not know, no one's ever told them, and no one needs to tell them because they think that they are the God's gift to mankind, so they are the most intelligent people that's ever lived on the earth, are the Jewish people. They're God's chosen people. In point of fact, the Wailing Wall is a Roman fort built by the Romans, and the Jews are at the Wailing Wall thinking it's the wall of King Solomon's temple. It is not King Solomon's temple. Go on the web, look up Fort Antonia, like Anthony, Fort Anthony. 
and you will see Fort Anthony was built by the Romans to control Jerusalem, to kick the Islamic world out of Jerusalem. They had to set up a fort for the Roman Empire. Unbelievable. And, so, and that Roman Empire's fort is called Fort Antonia. Look it up, and you'll see pictures of the Wailing Wall. So the Jews are actually at the Roman Wailing Wall, offering up their prayers to their Jehovah, which is nothing more than the same uh, uh, Antonism I told you about. So that's why communism, Nazism, Christianity, Judaism are all Antonism. And it's, it's all the an same people story. at the highest levels, right? It's all the same people. It's Just, all the same people. At the very top, it's all the same people. And but I'm I'm fascinated with how many Jews go to the Wailing Wall and will go to the, uh, go to Israel, never realizing for a moment what Israel is and where it got its name. Why do you call that country Israel? Why it comes from the name of the three gods of the esoteric world, the three sun gods, Isis was the goddess in in in, e in Egypt. And then after Isis, with the Pharaoh Akhenaten changing the worship of Isis into Ra. the worship of the sun, Ra. God's son, the light of the world. Son of God, son God. Yep. And his name was Amun-Ra, R-A. So therefore, when the Hyksos people, who we call, the, we call them Hebrews, but they were called Hyksos back in the ancient world, and when the Hyksos went into Egypt, they went in illegally. And the Egyptians didn't want them in their country. Just like we have the illegals pouring into our country by the million. Nobody gives a damn. Nobody cares. Just let them come on in. <laughs> and so, they'll, yeah, if you need some guns, we'll give you some guns. If you need alcohol, we'll give you plenty of plenty to drink. If you need, uh, if you got children who are sick, we'll take care of them. Bring them on in. Bring all the criminals. Bring everybody in. Come on in. America's got plenty of food and guns for everybody, and that's what is going on with the the Catholic Church today. The Catholic Church controls Mexico, Central America, South America. The Vatican operates out of the Medellin cartel in Colombia. That's where the, the money CIA, is going. They, they and that's run where the Colombia is Catholic. And the Medellin cartel that's selling us the drugs, that's all Vatican. And so the Vatican is making money off of everybody behind the scenes. And we're not supposed to know anything about it. And if you do know, you keep your mouth shut and do what you're told to do and be in compliance and pay your bills and stay out and stay the hell away from government and religion. You're not supposed to Man, know anything. Let me show you how a very small little insignificant little uh, trick is being played on the American people. Just a small insignificant, not even worth discussing. I'm just using it as an example to show you how we have been deceived in small things. When you get a ticket, when a cop pulls you over on the highway, he pulls you over and you're getting a ticket. He comes up to your door on the driver's side and he asks for your identification. And then he will be writing out a ticket. He pulls out a ticket book. He's writing out the ticket and then he's signing it. It's his ticket. Not yours, it's his ticket. And he's writing out the ticket and he's signing the ticket. You are an undersigner. You are a undersigner. You are what is called a co-signer. So you're co-signing a ticket in commerce. That's like if you go into Sears and buy a suit for $500 and you don't have the money and you may not be able to pay for it and I'm with you, I can co-sign for you. That means if you don't pay for it, I have to. So therefore, it's his ticket. It's in his pocket. He fills the ticket out and he signs it. He signed the ticket. It's his ticket. And then he gives it to you to co-sign. Now, you co-sign the ticket and you're expected to pay for it. But if you don't want to pay for it, you take that ticket, photocopy it, 
send it to the Secretary of State in the state in which you live and tell the Secretary of State, I have made a mistake, please help me. I have co-signed for a ticket in commerce where money will be changing hands between myself and government. So it's a ticket in commerce. I did not want to co-sign on a ticket in commerce. I made a mistake. What can you do to help me? I don't want to co-sign for this. The Secretary of State will send it to the Department of Treasury in the state in which you live, and the Treasury Department will then send the ticket back to the cop, and he has to pay it. It's oh. his ticket. He's the one that signed it. He's the one that wrote it out. Have you seen anyone actually do this, George? Yes. Yes, I've seen. I was with a young man from New York who I got him started uh, learning about how the world worked. And he was he was young and yet very, very bright young man. And I really liked him. And he and I were very close friends. And he was able to discover how to do things legally that I've never heard of before. He took my information and went another 100 miles with it. And and I saw him do that. He got he got pulled over, and I was in the passenger side. And when the cop was pulling him over and writing out the ticket, and he leaned over and opened up the glove compartment, pulled out an empty beer can. He said, I got an empty beer can here. Better do something about that. And the cop thought he was being a smart aleck, so the cop wrote down had an open beer can in the car. And then he said to the cop, if you check the back the back lights on the back lights, they don't work. If I, <laughs> if I hit the brakes, you will see they don't work. You better do something about that. So the cop wrote that down. He thought he was being a smart aleck, and he's going to really write him up a big ticket, a fancy one. And he wrote him up of uh, that charge, and he told him a couple of other things. He didn't have his registration with him. You better write me up on that. And he wrote him up on that one. And now it's about $350, 400 and then he signs it and gives it to him, and, and my, my young friend signs it. He's an undersigner. He's under the signature of the cop. Right. The cop's ticket, and he signed it first. So, therefore, he is a co-signer. So he sent that ticket, and I said, what are you doing with it? He said, I'm going to send it to the Secretary of State. It's the SOS, Save Our Ship. No, Secretary of State. Oh, my is, God. It's going to save your ship. Your ship is going underwater because you don't have the money. So the money is water. And that's why we say money goes through your hands like water. But why? Because money is, in fact, considered to be a liquid asset. It's water. It's the ebb and flow of the ocean. It comes in and goes out. It comes in and goes out. It's a continual flux. But coming, the money comes into you, but it goes right back out. So it's an ebb and flow of a liquid asset. That's why you put it into a bank. Why do you put your money into a bank? Because they're called river banks. And what does a river yep. bank do? Yep. It, it directs the flow of the currency. Oh, Yo. oh, my God. Once you understand what a bank is and how it's connected to the international banking system, it's the ebb and flow of power around the world. And the people who print the money, they understand that. Your money, the value of your money, depends on how much blood your country has shed in a war. That's the value of your money. Depending on how much blood you have shed in a war, that tells the international banking world how important your money is. And since America has been at war with everybody in the world from day one, that's why our money is so powerful. Because your money is based upon, the value of your money is based upon blood. That's why we have a term of blood money, because oh, your my. money is based on the blood your country has shed. I thought that and they so, said, Jordan, that our money is based on the petrodollar and the uh, based off of Saudi oil, and that's and that's our money is kind of useless right now. 
And that's kind of interesting, too, because I've always, you know, again, going back to the city of London, Jordan, uh, and, and this, like, why is the pound worth so much? Like, what do they export? <laughs> what, do they, what do they sell? Are they, nothing. 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 What is England? It's got no natural resources. What are they exporting? I mean, I'm sure they, they create goods. I, I'm not saying that, but they have no natural resources. They're an island, right? Yeah. That's right. So what is But it's, they have a private deal with the Vatican signed in the year 1213. They have a private understanding with the Vatican we don't have. And they, they, the deal was made with, with the Vatican that the king of England made a deal with the Vatican and saying that he would allow international banking for the Vatican to be set up in the city of London. London is a corporation, not the city where the people right, live, right. but inside of London is the city, city of, of London. London. And the city of London is a Vatican corporation incorporated by the Vatican basic Masonic order called the Knights Templars. This is what Steven Spielberg is telling us all about in the Indiana Jones series, the Knights Templars. The Knights Templars were very, very big on the Jewish Ark of the Covenant, Nazis, Indiana Jones, and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Why did the Nazis want the Lost Ark of the Covenant? Yeah, you better find out the connection between the Jewish lost Ark of the Covenant, Covenant and the Nazi movement. Adolf Hitler wanted the Nazi, the Nazis, and Adolf Hitler wanted the Jewish Ark of the Covenant. Why? Steven Spielberg is a lot of things, but stupid is not one of them. <laughs> he knew if he put out a movie about the Jewish Ark of the Covenant, you better be correct. And what you're doing, you better be correct because you're going to lose your name and your up and everything you've worked for if you put out something that's going to be laughed at and proven false. And so that's why the Nazis wanted the lost Ark of the Covenant and the red, white, and black color of the Nazi flag, the red, white, and white. The red, white, and black goes back to the, it goes back to Atlantis. We're told by Plato that the three colors that were dominated, that dominated Atlantis, the lost continent of Atlantis, was red, white, and black. That's why you always see a swastika in red on a white background on a black flag. Well, it's oh, black yeah. on white with a red yeah, background. There it is, dude. Wow. That's the color of Atlantis. And remember, in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, it was on the Cup of Christ. They were after the Cup of Christ, if you remember. Well, the Cup of Christ is an astrological constellation. It's called Crator. Look it up on the, on the web. It's called Crator. Crator is a constellation of stars. It's called the Cup of Christ. So the Holy Grail is the cup of Christ or the astrological symbol of Krator. This whole thing is Nazi occultism yes. dreamt up by Jews. Dreamt up by Jews and spread around the world under different names and different titles and different symbols. The more and more I study this, the more and more I think it's, it's more Saturn worship. The black That's what it is. It's Saturn worship. Because the regular person on the street, you would call a Jew, has no knowledge of any of this at all. None. Zero. All three of the major religions, a book is inserted that changes the kind of direction of that religion and <laughs> uh, makes it a different thing. And that's all done on purpose to get us to fight with each other. All of it's done on other. purpose. And there's only a handful of people in the world who have risen to the top of the world that understand the name of the tomb. And when they understand it, finally, you get it, how this, how this play is being put together, what the words mean, who's in control, and who the bosses are. Once you understand that, now you can start acting like a godfather, have your own family. Yeah. 
But if you don't understand, you will finally find out one day soon when you think you're the boss of all bosses and you're going to find out, no, the Jesuits are all the bosses. The Jesuits have killed They've killed people, they've murdered, and if you go into the encyclopedia or dictionary and look up the word Jesuit, it will tell you it's a military order. It's like an army. And so that's why the mafia talks about the guys on the street are, are, a, are, a, uh, are an army. They are a soldier. And then above the soldier is the, is the head of the mob, and over above him is the godfather. And so the whole idea of organized crime is based on the Vatican, the Holy Father, who talks and represents God. So he's the Godfather of the world. They will always be at the top because if you get in their way and cause them problems, they don't care if you try and get in their way, they'll just run over you. But if you're actually uh, able to get in their way and cause them problems, they will kill you. Yeah. There have been Jesuitical assassinations. Look it up in the encyclopedia. Look up the word assassinations. The assassins. Well, it comes from an Arabic word for a secret society that the Jesuits operated with and operated through. Uh, an Arabic operation called the assassins. They would assassinate political leaders that get in their way. So <clears throat> this is why John Kennedy, being a Catholic, he was supposed to do what he was told to do. And at the last moment, he decided, no, I'm not going to do what they're telling me to do. Well, yeah, but they put you into office, fool. And if you huh. don't do what they tell you to do, they're going to whack you because they whack anybody on the street they want. And they will kill you just as easy. And nobody's going to go to jail. Nobody. They'll kill you in public. Nobody will go to jail. Nobody will pay a fine. Nobody will pay nothing, and they'll kill you in public, right in front of the television, so the whole world can see us whack you on television, and nobody's going to jail. Why do they have to do false flags? Do they have to, to make scare it scare the people into doing things that they the people don't want to do? That's why. Why do you have to kidnap some wealthy man's daughter or son? and hold him for ransom because you want the old man to give you a million bucks. The only way he's going to do that is to protect his daughter from you. And so that's why you steal his daughter and kidnap his son so that you can get some serious money from him because you want him to pay you something. And so you're going to force it. And so that's why they want the American people to believe certain things and act a certain way. And so they will force you to do it. They'll blow down your two big main buildings in New York called Jackin and Boaz. The World Trade Center was a secret symbol. Only the Rockefellers knew. I knew about it a long time ago. The two World Trade Centers were called Jackin and Boaz, something high-degree Masons know all about. You ask any high-degree Mason. What is Jack and, and Boaz? They'll what say, well, it? we knocked them down in New York. It was the two World Trade Centers. One was called Jack and, and one was called Boaz. They both represented a male phallic in erection. That's what the World Trade Center was all about. <clears throat> this is why when you get married, you have to have a license. And incidentally, anything I tell you when I'm showing you little tricks of the trade, do not do not take my word for it because I am not a lawyer. I am not practicing law. I'm merely giving you an idea about how you're being manipulated and exploited in your ignorance. I am not suggesting that you go out and do anything about it. <clears throat> Let me give you another example that there's nothing you can do about it. If you do anything, you'll go to jail. <clears throat> when you buy a new car a new motorcycle, a new truck, I don't care what it is, a, a Sherman tank. If it, if it has wheels and you bought it, you get with the, with the new car or with the new cycle, you get something called an operator's manual. The operator's manual tells you how much oil to use and what how to take care of the engine and what you can do and not do. 
It's called an operator's manual. But if you're buying that car or that motorcycle or that truck or bus, whatever it is that has wheels and you, you're buying it, <clears throat> if you're going to use it to make money, it's called a capital product. You're using, you're not buying the car for the use of a car. You're buying it to use as a cab. Now that's different. If you're going to use the wheels to make money, it's a business. And therefore, you can't do business without a license. So you have to have a license to drive that car. It's called a driver's license. And the driver's license is a truck driver. He's not a truck operator. No, he's a truck driver. He's a bus driver. He's a, uh, he's a driver. And driver in maritime admiralty law means you're on wheels <clears throat> that will make you money. You are a driver. And therefore, you are now involved in commerce. And look up the word in commerce in a law dictionary. Commerce. You think it means money and business? No. Commerce in a law dictionary is sex. It's a business. You don't think so? If your business with her don't work out, you're not going to God. You're going to court. And you better bring your car and your, your house and anything else you think you own because it's just a business. You have a license between you. That's why you have to have a license. You've got to have a license to be a lawyer. Why? Because you're going to make money with books. They're called law books. And you study the law books and you can go into court now and know how to speak and what to say and what not to say. And so now you're making money off of not to say of what to, of what to say and what not to say. You're making money off of the law books. That's why you have to have a license because who wrote the law books? Who wrote those law books? Well, whoever wrote them, you owe them money. You owe them, so you have to license those books. So therefore, you have to have a license to be oh, an a attorney because you're making money off of somebody else's work. Oh, you're making my. money off of somebody else's writing. Did you ever hear the, the idea that a giant chunk of our taxes goes to Queen Elizabeth? Have you ever heard that? that there was well, of course. Of course it does. Of course it does because we are a corporation. In the United States, we are a corporation. We were incorporated in Delaware <clears throat> back in 1871. After the Civil War, it was discovered by the lunatics who were running our country. It was discovered that after the Civil War, we here in North America were a lot of things, but not united. We were killing each other during a civil war. So after the war was over, we were officially referred to as a corporation. We're not a United States. We're not united. We just came from a horrible war. So there was a very bad war, a bloody war, and we were not united. So it was decided by the people who run this planet that we would no longer be called the United States of America because we're not united. We would be made into a company, a private company, a corporation. And it was called the United States Incorporate. It was incorporated in Delaware as a privately owned corporation. So today, if you are a U.S. citizen, that means you are an employee of a foreign corporation because it's foreign to you as an American. <clears throat> because there are two different things operating right now. There's the United States of America and there's the United States Corporation. The corporation is in Washington, D.C., but the United States of America, the, the, the headquarters for the United States of America today is in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Not because the people in Philadelphia love each other. No, the Masonic Order of Brothers set up the United States of America, the city of Masonic brotherly love. And so, therefore, if you have any problem with, this, with the uh, Federal Reserve or the Internal Revenue, when you call them and tell them, you don't, you don't, you know, you, 
that your taxes are unlawful, they will tell you if you have a problem with the taxes, please call Philadelphia, and here's the phone number, and here's the person to ask for. They will be in charge of the United States of America. You're calling the Federal Reserve, and that is a corporation of the international corporate law. We are part of a corporation called the United States Corporation. We have nothing to do with the United States of America. We deal only with U.S. citizens. Who, if who you owns are under, this corporation? If you, are, if you are under the United States of America, you're referred to as an American. Therefore, you have an American's freedom. You have America's, you have America's protection. Your name is, is protected. And that's why the John Wayne movies, the old cowboy movies, the cowboys are riding into town with their guns on their hip, and they go in the bar, and they have a falling out with some guy in the bar. Well, if you can't, if you can't settle it like gentlemen, you can always go out in the street and finish it off and, and do whatever you got to do to finish this argument. Because if you're not going to back off and be gentlemen about it, then you both are armed, you're both adults, you both agree to it. So go out and go finish it. And there's nothing that the sheriff can do. There's nothing anyone in town can do. You have a right to carry a gun and to settle all arguments with the gun if that's what you choose to do. It may not be too smart because you may get the bad end of it. But you do have that right because you are an American and you have the right to carry a gun. That's why the cowboys never needed to get a license and pay a fee <laughs> and a fine to carry their guns. It's because they have a right to carry a gun. Where does Queen Elizabeth fall in this power dynamic that is the world? We know the we know that you know Do the, you know she is a Nazi? She is a well, I knew she was very close with Nazis. Well, she's a German the, the bloodline from Queen Elizabeth is Germanic. It's German, not English. See, there's a big difference between English and British. English is a bloodline. Prince, uh, what was her name? Princess Di was, yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is, the, oh. the royalty giving the, the Nazi salute. Right there, <clears throat> Queen Elizabeth. Hail Mary. That's why in Christianity you got the, the Vatican gives you a Hail Mary. No, it's Hail Caesar. And so it's Hail Nazism. <clears throat> and so we could talk about this kind of stuff for hours upon end. That I can tell you stories about how this government works, how our government in the United States works as opposed to the United States of America, and its, and its center for power in America is in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. It's a city of Masonic brothers who put together what we call the United States of America. You would not have the freedoms you have, you would not have the ability to read and think on your own, and the freedom of speech, and the freedom to travel, and all the other freedoms if it was not for the Masonic Order. The Masonic Order gave you and stood up for these rights before, before you were born. And that's why you have something called you have a right. You don't have a right. You only have a right if you make it a right. And the only time you have a right is if you stand up for your rights. If you don't stand up for your rights, you got no rights. And so that's why today America has no rights. We have to get a permit and pay a fine and pay a fee and ask permission and do what we're told and be in compliance because we are not free. We're slaves under the 14th Amendment. That is something that most people have no idea in the world about. Look into the 14th Amendment and what it really said, and then you will find out how it is that today you are a 14th Amendment citizen, meaning you are not an American. You work for a corporation. The corporation is called the U.S. Corporation. And, and catch this. 
If you come into America, say from Mexico, illegally, if you come into Mexico illegally, you it's like you have broken into Ford Motor Company's warehouse at two o'clock in the morning. It's a corporation and they have private property and you broke into that property. Therefore, you are illegal and they can throw you into jail. Well, that's what's happening when you get people coming across the border into the what they think is the United States of America, the picking grounds of the world. Got plenty of food, plenty of guns, and plenty of everything. Come on in. And so the, everybody thinks that they're coming into the United States of America. No, you're coming into the private property of a corporation. And when, when you come in here on the corporate and under the corporate title of the corporation called United States, <clears throat> if if I paint your house and you don't pay me, I can put something called a mechanics lien on your property. I can lien your property. I can lien on you. That's what the mob does. They lien on you because they you owe them money and you haven't paid them so they can put a lien on you. Well, that's why when you come across the border in Mexico and you're making money here, the corporation called United States is not the United States of America. It's a corporation, and they can put a lien on you. And therefore, you are now referred to as an alien. You, They have put a lien on you. So you are an alien, an alien. It's a system that's been manufactured over centuries and centuries and centuries. That's why we're never going to get out of it. That's why America cannot get out of the mess we're in. There is no way. And people like Trump are smart enough, experienced enough with dealing with the mafia, La Cosa Nostra, and the back east on the east coast you don't bail nothing over two stories without dealing with the mob period you don't get you don't get labor you don't get the cement you don't get nothing you don't get nothing to build nothing unless you know how to deal with the powers that be and you better understand what those powers are and you better know how to talk to them and you better know how to treat them, because if you don't, they will kill you. They'll teach you a lesson. And so it's a deadly business becoming a billionaire builder. It's a deadly business, and you better know what you're doing. Well, that's why today Trump knows exactly how this world really works. He knows what to kiss and when and who's and what. He knows exactly how it all works. And that's why the Democratic Party want him dead. They want him out of office. Why? Because he damn well knows too much. That's what happens to you when you are very powerful and very wealthy and you know too much. Your opposition will kill you. They'll set it up and have you assassinated. Why? Because they don't want you running anything because you know too much. And that's why they want him out of office, because he knows, if he knows anything, he knows organized crime. For sure. <laughs> he dude. was in New York. For sure. For he was sure. in New York. My God, you Chicago. You don't build in that area there in New Jersey without dealing with shady people. Oh, and by the way, people on Wall Street, shady people. He most likely was cleaning uh -huh. money for the mo uh, for uh, the mobs towards the uh, to keep his casinos afloat. Because uh, he needed all the business he could get. and this That's is what, precisely what, correct. Thank you, dude. Thank and so you, anybody dude. who knows how to talk the talk and walk the walk and make sure you're making good friends with the mob and make sure you got deals that you follow up on. If you make a deal with them, you better follow up. Because if you want to mess with them, they'll mess with you. And so he has been able to make an uh, empire out of dealing on international markets with international criminals at the top of the world. He knows exactly how this tune is played. He knows exactly what is going on in America like I do. 
He knows precisely who the enemies are, and he knows precisely who the Godfather really is. And so this is why back in the 30s and 40s and 50s in this country, when communism was first coming into being in the 40s with the Soviet Union, the founding of the Soviet Union was the home of communism. The official term for communism on any country that was taken over by the communists was called the People's Democratic Republic. We have the People's Democratic Republic of China the People's Democratic Republic of North Korea, the People's Democratic Republic of Cuba, People's Democratic, get it? Democratic. That's why when democratic means mob rule. Demos is a mob. Cratic is the rule, like democratic. Democratic is mob rule. Well, that's what you have when Martin Luther King uh, died and while other people, other blacks were killed. You had these horrible uh, riots in the streets all over Los Angeles, New York, New Jersey. They were called demonstrations. Why? Because it was promoted by democrats. Democrat means mob rule. Well, the day of mobs out in the street, there's uh, 150,000 of them, and they're all turning over cars and busting windows and lighting fires and killing each other. So it's a demonstration by democrats. Now, and let so me ask the you Communist something. Party in America today, the Soviet Communist Party in America today, is called the left. Why do we call the Communist Party the left in America? It's because your heart is on the left side. And left in Latin is sinister. Look it up. The words left in Latin is sinister. And so that's why the heart is on the sinister side of your body. It's called the left. And so we talk about the left wing. The left wing and the right wing. What are you talking about, left wing and right wing? You're talking about the American eagle, the ball-headed eagle. The eagle only has two wings, a left wing and a right wing. And that's why if you go on the back of the American dollar bill, I'm giving lectures on that. I'm putting together a, a, a lecture I'm going to deliver in about two weeks in Laughlin, Nevada. I'm going to be speaking at a, at a conference in Laughlin, Nevada called the 2020 UFO mega uh, conference. It's going to be a massive, very big UFO conference in which I am one of the main speakers. And I'm going to be delivering a lecture, a slide, it's going to be a PowerPoint slide presentation on the secret societies that run the world. And what those symbols mean on the dollar bill, you will see above the eagle's head a circle of stars. You see the circle yes. of stars? And you see those stars are 13 of them. Yep. And it's above the eagle's head. There it is. What, what symbol does the 13 stars make up together? What is the symbol above the eagle's head that the 13 stars collectively put together make a symbol? What is the symbol it makes up? A sun? Some kind of sun or something? Star David. Star David. I'm That's just... right. The Star of David. Let me see. Oh, yeah. It's right there, there yeah. There you go. Star there David. There you go. There you go. Bam. And it's how many stars? There are 13 stars. See it? Yep. 13 stars, there are 13 arrows on one side, there are 13 leaves and berries on the opposite side. If you enlarge it, you will count 13 berries and 13 leaves, 13 arrows and 13 stripes on the American flag. You see that flag on the eagle's chest is 13 stripes, <clears throat> not horizontal, but up and down. That is called an American flag. What we have today is a military flag. It's called the U U.S. flag. The U.S. flag has the stripes going the, the, the opposite way and the stars representing the states 
and therefore it's a military flag, and that's yes. why the military I just flies read that about flag. This. There's two flags. There's a, uh, there's there's two a, different flags. One is for the one is for the military that runs this country, and one is for the people who founded this country. And it was called the American flag has the stripes going up and down, but the military has the stripes going crisscross. And so there's a there's a United States flag and the United States of America flag. They're not the same. There are two constitutions. What? That's why it's called a constitution. What? It's a con. There are two different constitutions. One is for the Constitution for the United States and the Constitution of the United States of America. So one is for and one is of. You go into a federal court, you better decide which one you're going to talk about in front of the judge. <laughs> you have a contract of or for something. If it's of, means one thing, and for means something totally different. And if you think about legally, you would talk to a lawyer and ask them, what's the difference between signing something of and something for? They'll say, well, you better figure out what you're doing before you sign anything. And so there's two different constitutions, but we're not supposed to know that. There's a constitution of the United States Corporation, and there's a constitution for the United States of America. I've been doing this kind of research since 1959, some 60 years ago. And I could tell you many, many stories personally that I was involved with that I was there as a key personal involvement and in some really extraordinarily incredible stuff that I cannot talk to you about in public. It would cost me my life. It would cost the life of other important people who confided in me and told me things that nobody else is supposed to know. And I could not do that to them. I would not do that to their family. Uh, and I'm not so great, I wouldn't do it to myself. <laughs> and if I go on the air and talk to you about things that I personally know that I was involved in, uh, I am not going to see the sunrise tomorrow morning. Okay, Bottom line you. is, if I tell you the truth, you are a dead man walking. Yeah. If I tell you the truth. I'm and cool you better that know that I'm a dead man walking too if I shoot my mouth off in public. Because what I would tell you would make great radio. It would be a sensational show if I told you the things I really know that I was there as an eyewitness to see. That's why I am who I am today and I'm known around the world for what I do is because I've been places that you haven't been. I've seen things you haven't seen and I've been in business with people you don't even know exist. And so, therefore, if you open your mouth and talk about some of the things you've seen, you will not be around tomorrow. And I'm not going to do that to my friends who have been trusted me. I am totally convinced that there are aliens here who are reptile aliens. Of that, there is no doubt in my mind. I have never personally met one. But I have had too many incidents where I have learned from very powerful people, very high up that you have no idea in the world that I know. People you would never even dream that I have been in the company of. And what they have told me, I'm talking about above the president of the United States. What they have told me in private would scare you if you knew what they know and what the military already knows. A long time ago, I was shown, I was, I was there and I was shown that California State, I don't even know if I should say this. Oh. The state of California has personal license plates for the mafia. California State, the governor has a, has uh, ordered particular license plates for members of the mob. 
And therefore, if you have that particular <coughs> license plate, the police will Don't not you stop over. you. They will not. They will not arrest you. They will not talk to you. They will do nothing. They will not touch you, because you have a particular license plate on your car that says you are connected to directly the mob. You mess with me, and we'll mess with you. Uh, that's Period. Like, that's like these guys who get murdered, right? They all have the. the like when they get suicided, there's a certain way it's presented and it tells the cops don't investigate this. That's right. Why? Because of the op because of the license on the car. The license on the car means the state won't touch it. Period. Why? Because the the underworld crime, the, the organized crime syndicates, they're very dangerous. I mean, all you got to do is watch the uh, you know, the the uh, television shows, The Godfather, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, and the one on television. What's the one? The big one on TV. Oh, uh, Sopranos. Sopranos. Yeah, watch the Sopranos, and that will tell you the kind of government that's operating for, for you sure, in California. Dude. Keep in mind, Chicago was one of the main spots in the United States of America that was criminal, period. Through and through, Chicago was the mob, Al Capone. And remember, Obama came from Chicago. Shit. Think about it. Jordan, Jordan. I, and, and I mean, more and more is coming about, out about Obama. His mother was a uh, basically MK Ultra sex kitten. Uh, I mean, it was like it's kind of his dad. His grandfather was super high up in the CIA. It's so crazy, dude. It's so yeah, crazy. You find out, you know, who founded the let me tell you something. The CIA is actually a Catholic Masonic order. It's founded by the Knights of Malta. I've been saying the Knights that. Knights of Malta is a, is a secret society within the Catholic Church. And the CIA has bought companies so that they can do business through certain companies. And one of the companies the CIA owns is the company that makes the uh, chocolate cookies. What is it? Uh, Nabisco. Nabisco Company is owned by the CIA. The Knights of Malta, the Catholic Knights of Malta owns Nabisco cookies. Oh and Nabisco cookies, you will see on the round Nabisco cookie, you will see a Knights of Malta cross is all the way around the circle as a Knights of Malta cross. It's, a, it's called the, the Nazi Iron Cross. Look on the, on the uh, what's the name of that cookie? That round black, uh, that round cookie. Oreo cookies? Huh? No. Oreo. Oreo. Yeah, the Oreo cookie has, when you, you will see Nabisco has a round circle and the two double cross at the top. See that round, see that round cookie? Yeah. You see the, the Knights of Malta cross, but the, that cross is going all the way around the cookie. They want to kill the president. They want to throw him out of office. Why? Because he's very smart. He's a very highly intelligent guy who knows how to deal the deals and walk the walk and talk the talk. Is he not compromised, He knows how to Jordan? deal with them. Is he compromised? I mean, he did. We, we've all talked about how he knows how to do business with the underworld. Does that make him compromised as well? Because I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, think. I think... I think that they are trying to put him into a compromised situation so that they can tell the American people and the world at large that, see, he's a criminal and we had to get rid of him because we're good Americans. No, he's a criminal because he knows who your mama is. He knows where you're getting your money from, you piece of crap. He knows the organizations you belong to in secret. He knows who you are. And he's got plans for you. And after all, he may be Donald Trump, but he's still the damn president. He can do whatever he pleases to do. Are you, and you know that. 
Are you worried about them taking him out? Because, you know, earlier we talked about if you try to change anything, they, they take you out. Are you worried about that? Yes, I am. I'm concerned because I know astrologically, I know astrologically that the whole entire earth as one entity, the entire earth in, in the last week of September, around September 27th, the whole earth is going to go into an astrological sign of Scorpio. Scorpio will be the dominant, uh, the dominant astrological symbol for the whole world. And one of the, one of the uh, gods in Scorpio is Mars. Mars is the god of war and scorpions are deadly. <coughs> and so I'm looking at a deadly war coming. And when I say deadly, I mean Scorpio, deadly. Mars is a god of war, and scorpions are deadly. And both of them are going to be in place in October. Uh-huh. The first week in October, the whole Earth moves into the, the, the constellation of Scorpio. Okay. But God help you if you're still alive in October. Watch what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen. I just know what Scorpio represents. And I know that Mars is connected to Scorpio in October. And I know what Mars represents. He's the god of war. And scorpions are deadly. That's why if the mob is going to whack you, they give you a kiss of death. That's why, that's why they give you a kiss of death because they are a backbiter. And that's what a scorpion is. It bites you with his back, with his tail. It's a backbiter. He's Jordan Maxwell. Go to jordanmaxwellshow.com for all his stuff. Uh, and I hope that the swarm, that's the listeners, we call them the swarm, hope they show up in bunches for you, uh, Jordan. And, uh, man, you're, you're, you're a G amongst Gs. You're a real gangster, brother. And uh, I really respect you, and I appreciate you coming on and spending some time with us. Oh, I would love to. I'd love to come back. We'll do it. We'll we'll. But set I'd like it up. to come back after you come see me. Well, Jordan, so I'm that when I email. say certain things, you will know what I'm talking about, I'm and you don't you. want to talk about it either. I'm gonna come see you, dude. Don't think I won't. <laughs> My dad lives out your way. I'm gonna go. For, okay. Go see it. Yeah, probably, come see him and come see me. For sure, my friend. Thank you, Jordan, <clears> for doing it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I appreciate you, uh, and we will talk soon and we'll see you on the other side thanks so much for your support love your fellow man love yourself talk to you later bye